why Africa is lagging behind economically. Africa has many natural resources, plus your Homo sapiens developed quite early in that region. So together, it might give a good head start to this region compared to the other. And moreover, Africa is just gigantic. It's a massive land. You could fit on the same area Greenland, the US, China, India, Spain, France, the UK, and still have room for some other countries. However, when you look at development indicators today, African countries are nearly systematically at the very end of those rankings. On the other hand, if you look at the ranking for the most violent conflicts, the number of deaths in conflict, the number of conflicts, well, African countries tend to be at the very top of this list. So how can we explain this? What science has to say about this difference? To answer those questions, I will first start on a best-selling book, Prisoners of Geography, which relates many facts and anecdotal evidence that explain why the geography did not help Africa at a whole. And then we will see what researchers and scientific research has to say about it and why is it so important to go further than just those anecdotal evidence and use scientific research. Let's see that together. There are two particularly important aspects for development, production and trade. Indeed, either you produce the goods, either you import them, you trade them. Let's start with the trading part. If you look at Africa, the upper part is covered by the Sahara Desert. And below, you have the arid Sahel region. And on each side, you have the Atlantic Ocean and the Indian, Indian Ocean. All those factors really prevent most of the African continent to trade outside with other region, or at least for the early development periods. Moreover, within continent, it's, it is also difficult to trade because you have the massive Congo rainforest that was very difficult to cross. So if land trade is difficult, why not turn to rivers to trade within the, the continent? Indeed, in Africa, you have the largest river in the world, the Nile. But most of the rivers have steep segments that really prevent to easily trade across uh, large distances. And even if you have large rivers, for example, the largest rivers are the Nile, the Niger, the Congo rivers, or the Zambezi rivers, well, they do not connect to each other. And this is a massive difference compared to Europe and the US parts of the, of the world that are really developed today. And early development in those regions were really, really facilitated due to the fact, due to large network of rivers, navigable rivers uh, on those both continents. Fine, it's difficult to trade. So what about production? Well, as we have seen, the top of, Sahara, of Africa is covered by the desert Sahara. Below you have the rocky Sahel, so already a large part where it's difficult to grow crops. And when the climate is a bit more humid, let's say, you have mostly jungles or swamps. And all those regions are really difficult or not suitable for most of the crops. So if crops is not a good solution for production, what about cattle? Well, most of the domestic species have been very difficult to tame. And a quote from Jared Diamond, a famous quote, kind of summarized well the situation. History might have turned out differently if African armies fed by barnyard giraffe meat and backed by waves of cavalry mounted on huge rhinos had swept into Europe to overrun its mutton-fed soldiers mounted on pony horses. Indeed, the domestic species in Africa are really difficult, again, to tame and to produce meat or to use to work with. And as if it was not enough, with the hostile territory came the disease, as 
Africa is particularly suited for the tsetse fly and mosquitoes, which are, if we think about mosquitoes, the deadliest animals. All those are facts, but maybe with a little bit of good storytelling, you can tell the same story or similar stories for each region and sell the fact that geography is fostering or preventing development for every region. And you can tell whatever you want just based on the facts you will pick. So that's why we really need scientific research to go further than those facts, to systematically define an hypothesis and to test on a global scale to say if something that is valid for a region is valid for another and that we can really explain the differences between regions due to the geography and if yes to what extent what's the proportion of the difference that we can attribute to geographical factors and now i'm going to present a paper that did exactly that in this paper, the researchers use geographical features to predict development, economic development today. And they use a map at a very fine-grained level, meaning that you have small cells for the whole world of 30 kilometers by 30 kilometers, where they observe geographical features and economic development. Before listening to the answer, Comments below, what do you think the proportion of development or the difference in development we observe today, we can attribute to geography? Is it 5%, 50%, 95%? Let me know below and we can discuss further. First, to predict economic development, they use night light, which is a common strategy to predict economic development or observe economic development at such a fine grain level, so cells of 30 kilometers by 30 kilometers. And yes, you understood well, night lights, meaning that we have photo satellite pictures of the world measuring the intensity of the light at a very fine grain level, usually one kilometers by one kilometers. And then this is measuring to which extent each region is developed economically. And you can observe economic activity. Second, they use 24 variables, 24 elements that define the geography to predict how suitable the region is for trade or for production. So for production, they measure the crop suitability, so the, how soil is suitable for crops. They look at which type of soil you have, desert, swamps, mountains, steep slopes, and, and so on and so on, the ruggedness. They also capture uh, temperature, uh, so rainfall, and all those factors that might affect the suitability and the production of crops. And then they look at predictors, so elements that might predict well early trade. So for example, the distance to navigable rivers, to lakes, to natural arbors, uh, and so on and so on. And the researchers show that 47% of the differences between countries in economic development can be attributed to geographical features. So half of the difference in development today are just attributed to some random geographical setup that people were born with or developed with. And they also show that within country, 35% of the differences between rich and poor regions can be attributed, again, to geographical features. Fascinating work. So next time you hear someone questioning why those, there are those differences between the developed and the developing world, well, recall that half of those differences are easily attributed to geographical features. And what do you think is the other half? What's the other 50%? Is it colonization when we think about Africa? Is it something else? Let me know in the comments and I will gladly discuss with that with you. And one best-selling book. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you around.